Precalculus, how's it going? Week three coming at you. Um, we just have been talking about conic sections. You guys learned about hyperbolas. Um, we're, we're moving on in that section and we're going to learn something brand new today. Um, it lends itself well to conic sections, so that's why it's where it is in the book and why we're studying it. But uh, Miss Kendi was nice enough to share some of her notes with us, so take a look at those and just soak up as much as you can. I have another video posted on our to-do list that comes from Khan Academy that talks about this topic, but um, let's get started. Parametric equations. We're, we're going to talk parametric equations today. Those are equations that the need for parametric equations arises when we, we introduce a new variable. Well, we're used to writing like y in terms of x. Uh, f of x equals 2x plus 5 or y equals x squared plus x plus 10, things like that, one in terms of the other. But when we introduce a new phenomenon, like like time is the one that's used a lot, then we want to write these equations in terms of those things, in terms of this new variable, this new parameter, and that's why we call them parametric equations. So uh, let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. I made a little Desmos for you guys. It looks something like this. I, I think um, we're, we're talking orbital motion. Maybe this is a planet some some way out, somewhere out, somewhere in the cosmos, and uh, this is the path that the moon would take as it orbits around this planet we're talking about. And just looking at this, I mean, we, we have our equation. It's up here in red. Um, it, it's an equation for a circle. This is a circular orbit. Um, that gives us the path of this moon, but what it doesn't tell us is where is the moon right now? Where's the moon in... 10 days. Where's the moon in one month? So when we introduce this time element, um, we need to be able to account for this new phenomenon, this new idea. So um, is the moon here? Is the moon here? We don't know. When we just have this one rectangular equation, that's what we call this thing up here when it's x's and y's on the Cartesian coordinate plane, um, we only have the path of the moon. So I want th this new variable, the t for time, Mostly, we could use other ones as well, but T for time to figure out, well, where is the moon in five days? And so down here we have this parametric equation where I have a new equation with a T involved as my variable. This whole thing, this whole equation represents my X coordinate. This whole thing represents my Y coordinate. So if I said five days, depending on whatever my units are, I could plug in a five for T right here and get the X coordinate. I could plug in a 5 for t right here and get the y coordinate. Then we would know exactly, oh, the moon is, bam, right here after five days, or whatever the case may be. So this is an example where we use parametric equation. There's other ones, but this is the one that I think makes a lot of sense. Uh, the one on Cod Academy does a good job as well. So um, if you're a note taker, let's take some notes and then take a look at some of this stuff, and hopefully uh, you guys get something out of this. So um, here we are. We're at parametric equation. We have, in general, I wrote a little definition that I came up with what I think a parametric equation is, but it's uh, when we have two or more variables that are written as a function of some new variable, a third independent variable. Independent variables are the ones we control, the ones that we're, we're changing. And then those other ones are the dependent ones. So they're going to be affected by whatever this new parameter is. And most of the time we're going to use T for time. Okay, so we have three goals for this video involving parametric equations. I am going to give you a set of parametric equations. I want you to be able to make a table to find where the points are. Um, and once you have the table, I want you to sketch a graph for it. And then finally, I want you to write the rectangular version of whatever the parametric equation is. So we have a circle. Before on Desmos, I showed you what it looks like as just a circle in our standard form. And then I showed you the parametric equation version. We want to be able to go back and forth between those things. So that's what C is talking about. Make a table, sketch a graph, and then be able to convert these equations back and forth. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I said this a second ago. Here are the equations we're going to use. It looks something like this. I'll stop hiding it. Uh, the x-coordinate will always be 5 sine of t plus 13, and the y-coordinate will be 5 cosine of t plus 13. Okay. Uh, remember, I just mentioned independent and dependent variable. T is our independent variable. We can choose whatever values of T we want. And notice, if we're talking sine and cosine here, uh, it makes sense that we should be using some radians, some, some circular type um, angles. So um, uh, we're going to use 0 to 2 pi. If you remember about the period of this thing, the period of this thing is 2 pi. So we'll go to 0 to 2 pi. 
If we go to anything more, it's just going to repeat itself. If we do anything less, then it's, it's not a full circle. And we're just going to plug some values in. Um, we can take uh, easier ones and do like 0, pi over 2, um, pi, 3 pi over 2, or we can do more. But take a second, hit pause. You fill out the values for t. Here, I'll show you guys what I did. And then I'll let you finish it when you hit pause. So we control the t values. Pretend you can't see that. You saw nothing. There's the equation. Hit pause and go ahead and fill out the rest of that table. Zero is t, plug in zeros there. t is pi over 4, plug in pi over 4s right there. And we'll fill out this table for x and y. Go ahead. All right, we're back. Hopefully you guys did that and you're not just waiting for me to do it for you, but uh, I did do it for you, obviously. If we're going to move on, we got to have what these numbers are. So I'm going to set this down. Hopefully your table looks something like this. Obviously a little bit of rounding taking place here, but um, we get these points by going by pi's over 4 is what I went through. I'm going to show you guys on my graphing calculator um, what happens if you if you go by pi's over 2. You get something like this. There's, just, there's not a lot of points there, and then so we kind of have to take the next step and say, wait, it doesn't make sense that there's sharp points in this thing. Sine and cosine are smooth curves. So the more points you put in there, the more circular it becomes. The one on the, here's the one I just did, and that one goes by pi's over 4. I can change my calculator and say that the smaller I make the increments t go by, the more points there, there'll be. So let's go by something really small. Let's go by like 0.5 and see what that looks like. Yeah, it's almost a, a near circle there. What if I went by 0.1? More points means smoother curve and it's getting really really circular this is that circle that desmos thing i showed you earlier that, that that's what we're looking at right here so we have our uh, points and we, we get something new here what makes this different than um, a regular equation is we get something called orientation orientation is going to give us a direction that these points are going in almost like connecting the dots remember when uh, you had the draw pictures when you were little because this was a one and a two and a three and you just connected those in order. Something similar is happening here. Oh, I didn't want to draw my original, so I made a new one. Okay, something like that is happening here. We have, if you plugged in a zero and got 13, 18, that would give you this top point. That is like our first point, t equals zero. Time for us, in this case, would be zero. And then as I move along to pi over four, this thing moves along. And then we have direction involved. So as this uh, orbital motion, as this moon is going around, what direction is it going? We can draw our graph for our parametric equations, but on every set of every graph, we need to know what the orientation is. What direction um, is this graph going as t is increasing? As t is increasing, the graph is going, in this case, in a clockwise direction. Okay, so every graph, we make our table, we draw our graph, and then we add an arrow or a few arrows uh, to a kind of tell everyone what's the orientation, which way is this going, okay? Easy enough. So A, table. You control the t's, plug them in, get your x's and y's. B, plot them. Put the dots on, on paper. We can handle that ordered pairs, remembering that there's going to be orientation. There's a direction that these things are flowing, okay? Then finally, we get this, this last part, which is part C. Part C is <clears throat> finding the rectangular equation for the parametric equation. So I'm just using my calculator as a blocker here. A rectangular equation just has x's and y's, no t's. t was this, this new variable time, but there's some rectangular equation out there that will have the exact same graph, and that's what we're looking for. We want to find the rectangular equation that would have the same graph as this thing, okay? Um, what we're going to do, the one I gave you guys, this orbital motion one, is a little tricky. So I'm going to give you, we're going to take a half step back, and I'm going to give you a new, easier problem. So these, these variables and these equations coming up have nothing to do with the circle that's on this calculator and that we've been talking about. I just wanted to start you off with an easier one. So here's the easier one. Again, it's a parametric equation. My y is written in terms of t. My x is written in terms of t. But, but we don't want t. If we're going to a rectangular equation and we want to see what it looks like, there is no t. It's just x's and y's. So to make this happen, we called... Uh, we call this eliminating the parameter. I am going to use substitution from way back in your systems of equation days. And I'm going to solve one of these equations for t and then substitute that into the other equation for t. When you do that, there's no more t's. It'll just be x's and y's. 
It'll be a rectangular equation that maybe you'll have to put in standard form if it's a circle or an ellipse, right? We're in conic sections or a line, y equals mx plus b, also a conic section. So that's the idea. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the work for it. Here are my equations. I have y equals 5 plus t, x equals t over 2. I chose to solve this one for t, so I'm just going to multiply 2 to the other side. I know t is 2x. So I'm going to come up here wherever I see a t, and I'm going to substitute 2x into its place. Did that. I wanted to write it what it looks like, y equals mx plus b, and we're dancing. So that is the rectangular version. I put Desmos here because I'm going to show you guys all this stuff on Desmos because I think it paints a pretty good picture for us. So I'm going to look at these. It's y equals 5 plus t and x equals t plus 2. And I'm just going to type those into Desmos <clears throat> as points. So my x coordinate was just t over 2, comma. My y coordinate was 5 plus t. Okay. And now we get this. Um, slider, this uh, inequality down here saying, what t values do you want? If I only go from 0 to 1, I'm not getting much of a graph. So let's go from negative 6 to 6. Okay, we start to see the makings of a line, because if I plug in negative 6 in for my x coordinate, I only get negative 3. And that's why the x starts at negative 3. You can think domain and range here. Okay, uh, what we ended up getting once we put this in a rectangular form was y equals 2x plus 5. So we'll type that one in. Y equals 2x plus 5, and it is. It's a match. They're, they're right on top of each other, and depending on what um, increments of t you want or what values of t you want, you might have to change the, the domain, a, put a domain restriction on this purple one to make them line up perfectly. Well, just what we said, I said a second ago, if I plug in a negative 6 here, a negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. I really only want my x values to start at negative 3. Okay, so... I want my x values to be between negative 3 and the biggest x value. Well, if my biggest t value is 6, then my biggest x value would be 3. Let's see if that matches up perfectly now. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I put a little domain restriction to make these line up perfectly, but this parametric equation has this rectangular equation that is basically the same thing, gives us the same graph, and that's what we're looking for. Okay, so... Um, we ended there. Now let's go back to R's. We got to get a little sneaky to make that happen with R's. So here's our equation for our parametric equation. Um, if you if you remember what we just did, it was about solving for t and substituting into the other one. That that puts a puts some strain on us. If you solve one of these for t, it's not impossible, but you'll have an arc sign in there or an inverse sign. If you notice where I wrote it over here, and uh, then I put a grumpy face because having the inverse sign of a cosine that that's that's going to be rough on us. Okay, so here's the sneaky part. What we are going to make use of, anytime we are, we're involved with sines and cosines like this, we're going to make use of the Pythagorean identity. If you remember that, it's over here in pink. It's that sine squared, and I put theta, I should have put t, but that's okay, variables. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So what I can do, if I can solve this for just sine t and then square it, that would be this. If I can solve this one for cosine t and then square it, that would be this. And then I know if I add the two together, I'm going to set it equal to 1. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there at the end of this video. We'll start up the next video here and soon. But why don't you try that as you switch between the videos. Try to solve these for sine and solve them for cosine. Square them and then add them. Then you know it has to be equal to 1 because sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Okay, I'll see you in a second after you try that.